Today, I'm going to show you how I turn EVA foam floor mats into this chess piece. For figuring out this shape, I found it's super handy to make the entire thing out of actual scrap floor mats. That way, the template behaves the same way as your final foam and it has that thickness to it. Now, I have a great source to find old scrap floor mats for free. Check it out. Greetings fellow maker, I'm Brittany Duran from Punish Props and today we're making Sweepy's torso armor. I have a difficult time getting torso armor to be the correct size and shape, so I actually did template out this whole thing using old scrap floor mats. Let me show you how I use that template to make this piece. These mats were starting to fall apart, so I decided to give them one last important task by cutting up the foam for armor templates. I roughly sketched on the foam and used scissors to cut the segments smaller and change the shape until I was happy with the size. Foam spacers helped suspend the robot-shaped armor. Some test pieces were too small, so I cut the seams apart and glued in extra foam strips. Now that the base is figured out, I started transferring the pattern onto cardstock paper. To make the seam on these two pieces exaggerated, I cut the foam completely apart, carefully sawing around the curves. Sanding cleaned up my crimes and I beveled the seam connection. The rotary tool helped with the rivet details and I cut in a little triangle bit, which opens up with a heat gun. Now the pieces can be rejoined and shaped. The hinged piece is slotted with thinner foam. And the first chest parts are complete. It's time to build from here. For my 3D paper templates, I leave extra paper material and crease the needed shapes. Then I'll cut off the excess or add tape to extend the pattern if needed. Since the foam has a thickness, the seams are cut at angles so the end pieces are easier to glue together. 6mm craft foam will act as the spacer and support for the center part. Foam hinges are cut into the back of the armor to give the side panels more of an angle. We're making progress, now it's time to add the bottom section. This panel was cut at an angle and super glued in place. I had some extra laser cut circles that happened to be close enough in size for my next part. The top circle needs more detail added. I started with a sharpened PVC pipe and enhanced the cut with a knife, then separated out the cut even farther with the pipe. This whole circle is supposed to have curved sides, so I went to town with my rotary tool, then switched to a smaller sandy drum to cut in the rivets. I cleaned up my work with a tapered grinding bit and smoothed out the details with a heat gun. The base circle and the thinner foam strip are brushed with contact cement. After the cement dries, the strip is tacked in place and the extra material is removed. A bevel was sanded into the edge strip and the top circle is hot glued in place. Now that the circle is shaped, I traced and cut away the correct amount of material, which got sanded for a cleaner seam. I added entirely too much hot glue and ended up with a gap and a bit of a mess, which I covered up with some thin foam. Totally on purpose, I swear. It's now time to start figuring out the rib torso pieces. The foam template was torn off and transferred to paper. The lines partway through the template will be cut out trenches to add some angle to the piece. Even with a sharp blade, some of my curved cuts take two tries to get completely through the floor mat texture, and that's fine. There's a big indented seam in the rib piece that I cut completely free, then re-glued into a recessed position with a thin foam shim for support. The bigger sanding drum cut in this circle detail, which I extended with a knife and some heat. Foam trenches are cut into the back and peeled away. 
The seams are hot glued one at a time and held in place until cool. I left extra material on the front and back of the side pieces because I want them to overlap and be removable. Since this armor will be floating away from my body, I don't need adjustable straps. I just need Velcro attachments. I use the same attachment method as my shoes for this build. Velcro sewed onto nylon webbing, which is hot glued onto the scored foam. These pieces needed to sit away from the armor at a different angle, so the Velcro was glued onto foam blocks, which were then contact cemented onto the panels. This did leave a noticeable gap where I could see the Velcro peeking out, so I glued on some scrap foam to hide the seam. Hey! <laughs> Like we nail it first try. The shoulder strips were cut from floor mats and heat formed into shape. There are circle details that run down the whole length of the shoulders, which I'll make from a two millimeter foam strip. I tested some leather working tools to hand punch out the circles. This is great if you only need a few details punched, but I needed to punch a lot of these and I don't have a bigger circle punch. So I also tested out these cuts on the laser cutter. Happy with the result, I decided to go with our laser. The laser cutter makes short work of the thin two millimeter foam and didn't hang around in one spot long enough to cause any kind of foam warping. I placed painter's tape on the shoulders to mark where the strips would attach. I was thinking I'd use contact cement so the tape would protect the areas from overbrushing, but I ended up just tacking down sections with super glue. This way, there wouldn't be any exposed tacky adhesives inside the circles, which are sure to fill up with cat fur. The shoulders are also going to be removable, so I glued on more Velcro to the inside of the chest piece. With the side and shoulder panels attached, I can now move on to the back plate. The first template was sketched out and test fit to make sure the connections will reach. These panels are made from more floor mats with sanding drum rivets added and trenches cut out of the back for hinges. I cut out a base for the rest of the back pieces and pressed the parts together with contact cement. There's a raised up design in the center of the back that I cut out of six millimeter foam. I didn't notice until I glued it in place that the design is supposed to be more tapered, but I just left it for now. I ended up needing more room on my shoulder pieces for Velcro, so I cleaned off the area and tested where the nylon webbing and Velcro would attach. These pieces Velcro together at the same angle, but that won't work for my lower side attachments. I ended up cutting the side strip shorter and gluing on a flat piece of foam at a different angle that will line up with the back Velcro. That raised up back design bothered me enough to cut it away and hack out a triangle section of foam. Now this part has more of a taper, which I like way more. The next part of my foam template is the back handle thing, which I refined to fit my new back pieces. I tried to keep most of the design as one piece, which is kind of a pain for thicker foam. It probably would have been easier for the whole angled strip to be a completely separate piece. The sides of the handle bend outwards and I wedged some scrap foam into the hot glue to help with the shape. I knew the fit wouldn't be perfect, so I used contact cement to force my handle into the correct position. Foam is forgiving like that. There's a lower back detail that I was going to leave out, but it has a cool shape, so I took the time to make the template, this time keeping the angled strip as a separate part. The fine details are cut into the foam and opened up with a heat gun. There's some tube designs that attach to the front of the chest piece. I have a selection of EVA foam dowels that TNT Cosplay Supply sent to us. Thanks guys! Let's see if these dowels can be transformed into the shapes I need. I heat formed one section at a time and held the shape in place until the foam cooled. I glued the starting connection together and then tacked down the middle location of the tube. Now I could cut off the extra material and complete the shape. These worked out really well. And that's the whole torso! The pieces can be taken apart for easy transport. Easily taken apart. Wait. Ah, I glued the tubes to the removable side pieces. 
Some super glue on cure solution and slicing away at the foam fixed my mistakes. And now the pieces can be taken apart and stacked for easy transport. One of the things I like about this torso design is I have lots of airflow under the foam structure. The pieces will have a few upholstery foam blocks holding it in place, but the rest will be exposed bodysuit. I find this keeps me much cooler at conventions. Here's how it fits so far, and it's already pretty sturdy. I'm super happy with how this part of my costume came together. It was totally worth taking the extra time to template out the whole thing that really saved me headaches later on. My plaster torso cast is the very first one we made. I think we did it back in 2013. And since then, we've done a tutorial video. I'll link that down below if you want to make your own. Thank you so much for watching this build, and I hope these foam smithing techniques help you with your future costumes. Next week is the Sweeper Bot's head, so I'll see you guys in that video. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.